Story time about how my cat got me grounded. And yes, I mean my literal pet cat got me grounded. So a little background information, I was 16 and I was a freshman in high school and my parents were extremely strict. Now, of course, there was the usual no hanging out with boys, no hanging out with anybody on the weekdays. Well, my parents took it a step further. Actually, no, they took it like 10 miles further. I got my phone taken every night at six o'clock, even on the weekends, and my friends were only allowed to come over for eight hours exactly on the weekends. And they had to have a ride to and from my house. Well, usually my friend group and I were never invited to any kind of parties, but this one girl who had just moved to our school, she was throwing a huge party and she invited everybody, not just the popular kids. So obviously my friends begged me to go. They were like, please, like we can sneak over there. Your parents go to bed early anyways. Like for part two. Part two about how my cat got me grounded. And yes, I am talking about my pet cat. So like I said, my best friends are begging me to come out of the house. They're like, listen, like do whatever you have to to come to this party. This is the first and probably only party that we will ever be invited to in our entire lives. So at this point, I start planning to sneak out of my house. So my parents usually go to sleep at around 9.30, 10 o'clock at night. And they usually wake up at 5.30 in the morning. But since this party was on a Friday, obviously my parents aren't going to wake up at that time. They'll usually wake up around like maybe 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. So this gave me a perfect amount of time to do what I needed to do, come back and not get caught. But just in case, I made sure to turn off any alarms on their phone. But I also had to make sure that I had a foolproof plan to get out of the house and get back in. Now, of course, I couldn't go through any of the doors in the house because of the stupid ring doorbell. But there was one thing that did work in my favor. So my dad had been slowly but surely installing the window security alarms. But he hadn't made it to my room yet, so I was good to sneak out of my window. And thankfully, my window was on the first floor. Like for part three. Part three about how my cat got me grounded, and yes, I am talking about my pet cat. So like I said, I had a foolproof plan to escape, okay? I was going to get out the window, and I was going to just crawl back in and act like nothing ever happened. But there was an issue with this, okay? My dad was supposed to fix my window because I somehow broke it. I don't even know how. But anytime that I go to put my window up, it just literally falls. And not only does it fall, it locks when it falls. And obviously, you can guess what will happen if it does fall. I won't be able to get back in the house, and I will somehow have to get in the house without my parents knowing, which is literally impossible. So I will be grounded for the rest of my life. So I was going to put a book between the window and the window seal, but I didn't want it falling and making a lot of noise. So I decided to put a pillow there. So I snuck out of my house at 11 o'clock and I had the best time of my life, probably because that's the first and only time that I will ever be invited to any party. But fast forward, I go and I run to the side of the house to get into my window. And of course, the pillow is missing. And I'm looking around to see where the pillow went in my room. And of course, my cat is laying on it on the floor. So I tried messing with the window. And then all of a sudden, my parents walked in my room and saw me. Story time about how my best friend was obsessed with me. And I'm not saying obsessed as in, oh my god, like, you know, she does her hair like me. No, I'm saying in a creepy way. So a little background information, I was 14 and it was the summer before I was going into high school and I had this best friend who we're gonna call Madison. Now I met Madison like a month before school ended. She was one of those kids that nobody really liked and nobody wanted to be near, but we were partnered up in this one class and she's actually really funny. So since summer just started, I invited her over to have a sleepover at my house. Everything went well, we were swimming, we watched movies. But my house was in a really wooded area, so if you had certain phone carriers, you wouldn't get any reception. So she asked if she could use my iPad to text her dad. And it was like 11 o'clock at night, so I let her use it. And then we went to sleep. Well, I woke up around 3 in the morning because my phone kept going off, like for part 2. Part two about how my best friend was obsessed with me in a creepy way. So like I said, I woke up at three in the morning because my phone kept going off and it wasn't dinging or anything. It was just the light flashing when it would go off and on. So I look around for Madison and then I see my bathroom light is on, but the door is shut. So I just brush it off and I go on my phone and I see a bunch of text messages that were sent from me, but they weren't sent from me. Like obviously somebody had went on my iPad and started sending people messages. So I look at these messages and it's all texting Madison. And I kid you not, it's literally pictures of me while I'm sleeping that she sent to herself. Like there was a picture of my hair, a picture of one of my birthmarks. And then on her side of the nightstand, there was literally a lock of my hair. Like she cut my hair off and it was in a Ziploc bag. So at this point, I'm actually really creeped out and I go and tell my mom. And my mom talked to her mom and apparently she's done this before. Story time, would you call this cheating? So a little background information, I was 16 and a sophomore in high school. And I was dating this guy who we're going to call Tom, right? 
When we started dating, everything was super good. But a little bit into our relationship, I started to get the ick. Anything and everything he would do would literally irritate the hell out of me. So at that point, I told him that we should take a break. So we did. Well, while we were on this little break, I decided to go out with my cousin the one night. And she had brought this guy who she was talking to at the time. We're going to call him Jake. Jake and I had the same classes in school, but we never really talked to each other. Well, I started to get to know him throughout the night, and I realized we had a lot in common. I felt like he was flirting with me, so I decided to flirt with him. When we got home, I had told her how much I really liked Jake. We ended up FaceTiming and falling asleep on the phone together. We all hung out again the next day, and I invited him back to my house. Like for part two. Would you consider this cheating? Part two. So like I said, we all decided to hang out again the next day. It was really cold out, so I invited everybody back to my house. And when we got back to my house, we were watching horror films. And I was cuddling next to Jake on the couch. And listen, I wanted to kiss him really bad, but Tom and I had just gotten done with our so-called break. So I decided to be loyal and not do that. Well, a few days after Jake and I talking, I realized that I wanted to be with him and not Tom. So I decided to end things with Tom. And now Jake and I have been together for a year and two months and we couldn't be happier. But every time that we bring up Tom, Jake always tells me that I cheated on him. Would you consider what I did cheating? Story time, I was the toxic best friend. So a little background information, I was 16 and a sophomore in high school. And at the beginning of the year, I met this girl who we're going to call Riley. Riley and I hit it off straight away. Like a week after knowing each other, she knew everything about me and I knew everything about her. Well, then she tells me about this guy that she's talking to, who we're going to call Jay. She said that they would hook up sometimes and he would text her sometimes. But she said that I couldn't tell anybody because he said that it had to be a secret. So I tried telling her that he sounded like a fuckboy, but she decided she was going to do whatever she wanted. And I was like, okay. So fast forward to the end of the year, he adds me on Snapchat. Okay, don't get me wrong. He was really hot, but I had my own thing going on. So I really didn't pay that much attention to him. And I thought he maybe added me on Snapchat to be like, oh my God, I really like your best friend. And then I also was caught between a rock and a hard place. Do I tell my best friend that the guy that she likes just added me on Snapchat? Or do I lie to her? Well, I was going to tell her until I got a Snapchat from him, like for part two. Part two about how I was the toxic best friend. So like I said, I didn't know whether I should tell her that he added me on Snapchat or if I should. And I was going to until I got a Snapchat from him saying, hey, you're really pretty. Um, I think we should talk sometime. So I ended up telling her about it because I felt really bad. And she was like, this is why I can't trust girls. Like, you need to unadd him right now. Like, fucking block him. And I'm like, I didn't even do anything. Like, what the fuck? So whatever. I end up blocking him. It's fine. Until he texts me one day. And he's like, hey, it's Jay. Um, I think you blocked me on Snapchat, lol. And him and I had talked a little bit in school and I kind of started to like him. Well, fast forward, him and I ended up hooking up a few times. We were talking a lot. And he hadn't been texting Riley as much. Well, the one night while I was sleeping over her house, my phone was going off a lot. And I didn't think to delete any of the messages, like for part three. Part three about how I was the toxic best friend. So like I said, I was sleeping over her house the one night. My phone was blowing up and she knows my password and everything. And I stupidly did not delete the text messages between Jay and I. And I kid you not, I wake up to a slap across the face. It felt like she slapped me with her fist and it looked like it too because I had a black eye. So I woke up and she's like, what the fuck? Like, I hate you so much. Like, why would you do this? And I look down and she has my phone right in her hand on the text messages with Jay. And I ended up feeling really bad because she started crying saying that like, I knew that she liked him a lot. And I also knew the reason why he wasn't texting her as much. Well, then she ran downstairs and she told her mom. And the next thing I know, I had her, her mom, and her three other sisters screaming at me. And then I got blocked by Jay because she wasn't supposed to know and she leaked his nudes. Story time about why I beat up my best friend. So a little background information. Her and I had been best friends since we were in seventh grade. Her family was rich, mine was poor, and at first she was a really good friend. She was always there for me whenever I needed her. Until our freshman year of high school, which is when her and I started hanging out with boys. Now my mom was kind of strict. She wouldn't really let me hang out with boys, but her mom was more lenient about her hanging out with boys. 
Every weekend she would throw a party at her house and she would throw them in her attic because one, it was huge and two, her parents didn't give a fuck what she did up there. Anyways, she would always offer to do my hair and makeup before the party started, which always made me really excited because I never really put any work into my physical appearance. Well, little did I know, the only reason why she would offer to do my hair and makeup at these parties was so that way she could make me look like shit in front of all the boys. So after that, I taught myself how to do my own makeup and do my own hair, like for part two part two about why i beat up my best friend so like i said i learned how to do my hair and makeup and she went on vacation for like a month straight well when she came home she threw another party and she was like don't worry after i'm done getting ready i'll do your makeup and do your hair and i was like no it's fine i got it she literally looks at me and she goes are you sure you don't really know how to do that like it'll probably look really bad and i'm like why the fuck would you say that she goes no like i don't mean it to be rude it's just that like i want you to look good in front of the boys and stuff like that like sis tried to talk me into getting a shower for a full like 20 minutes so after that the whole night she's literally being a pick me girl she's making all these comments about me in front of the boys and i just keep brushing them off until her next party we got ready and i put on these expensive shoes that i had just bought and she goes wow you just like really like to copy my style don't you so she starts making comments that whole night about how my family's poor and stuff like that and she threw up all over my shoes so i dumped the trash can that everybody had threw up in that night on her punched her in the face but like two months later she came to my house and apologized story time about how my dad was on the news and now everybody knows my last name so a little background information this all happened whenever i was in sixth grade this all happened on a tuesday night so i had school the next day well my dad had went to work earlier in the day well around 10 o'clock at night we hadn't heard from my dad all day which was super weird for him because he was always home around 10 o'clock and even if he wasn't, he still would have kept in contact with us and let us know where he was at. So at this point, my family and I were really scared and we're thinking that something happened to him. I was calling and texting him. My mom was calling and texting him. My whole family was pretty much trying to get a hold of him. Like we had called all the hospitals to see if he was there. We called police stations to see if he might have been in jail or if they had his last name in the system. So nobody had heard or seen from him. So we all went to sleep that night hoping that he would show up in the morning. So the next day after I got home from school, my mom came home from work and she had told me about this phone call that she got. Like for part two two of how my dad was on the news and now everybody knows my last name so like i said my mom had gotten home from work and she told me about this phone call that she got while she was at work so apparently one of her co-workers called her and said hey i think i saw your husband on the news so after that she showed me the news article and i couldn't even believe what i was reading so i guess my dad had been drinking and he went to an auto repair shop and stole a car because i guess the keys were left in the door of the car and what makes this even worse the car that he stole had two guns in the trunk and they weren't two pistols these were two big ass guns that were fucking loaded oh wait i forgot something so before this he had been at the strip club and somehow he ended up in pink lingerie guys i cannot make this shit up so he was driving around and he decided to park right in the middle of an intersection and it was literally causing a whole fucking scene there were people with their kids worried as hell so after that a few people called the cops like for part three Part two about how my dad was on the news and now everybody knows my last name. So like I said, my dad parked in the middle of an intersection and people were calling the cops. So when the police arrived, my dad was half passed out in the car. This happened in like the middle of broad day, like there's traffic everywhere. So when they finally get up to the car, my dad is literally slumped in the driver's seat. There was a bottle of whiskey in the door and it was completely empty. When they went to arrest him, he started resisting. He was screaming a bunch of profanities at them and started kicking them, threatening them with guns which made the situation worse because my dad had no clue that there were any guns in the back of the car so that just made the police think that they were his so they take my dad to jail and he has like seven charges against him but we were happy because we knew where he was well the worst part is so the next day when i went to school people were coming up to me asking if that was my dad on the news some people were even making fun of me because of what he did and that's really fucking embarrassing for a 12 year old but it's okay dad i still love you Story time about the toxic boy that I almost started dating. So a little background information. Him and I both met on a set of a movie that we were in. Well, a few days into filming, he asked me out. So of course I said yes. And it was literally the most amazing first date ever. So he asked for a second date and I said yes, of course. And the second date was terrible. He literally just tried to get in my pants the whole time. So then he asked me for a third date. And for some reason, I said yes, hoping that it was not anything like the second date. And he didn't show up. So I pretty much got stood up. 
And then he even blocked my number. So a few months go by and I end up moving in with my best friend. About an hour away from where I was living when I met him. Well, the one night she came home and told me that he had messaged her on Instagram. Which I thought was funny as hell because my best friend did not swing that way. So she pretends to flirt with him and asks him to come over. So he drives an hour to our apartment and when he walks in, he just sees me standing in the kitchen. He immediately walked out after.